Brain chemicals or neurotransmitters help signals cross from one nerve cell to another. They play a key role in the function of our nervous system. And many events can trigger neurotransmitters, but we can be intentional to help them flow. And brain chemistry or neurotransmitters significantly impact how motivated we are, our productivity and our well-being. There are four responsible for our happiness and well-being. That's endorphins, dopamine, serotonin and oxytocin. Endorphins are our feel-good chemical. They're our natural painkiller. They're responsible for for blocking physical pain. So if we um, took on a marathon maybe, you know how you get to the wall, you hit the wall and you you think, oh, I can't go any further, I'm, I'm done, I have to stop. And all of a sudden you get this burst of new energy that your endorphins are kicking in and then you can progress and continue running and complete your marathon. They enable us to do that, to push on and actually complete our goal. So having a goal is a great way to boost our endorphins as well. But exercise is probably the one that most people use in the community to boost endorphins. Another way of producing more endorphins is to, with less damage to your body, is to listen to music. I I think the best way to um, uh, produce endorphins is, is actually laughter. The more we laugh, the more endorphins, and uh, and you can laugh your way through the pain barrier. There's another way to uh, boost endorphins too, and that's to eat some chocolate. Dopamine's one of the brain chemicals that makes you feel good. It it doesn't come in a great big rush. You tend to get it in small squirts as a reward for something. That's the miniature high that you get when your phone goes ding and you know that somebody cares about you, so you rush over to find out who it is. They purposely program it into a lot of video games, so you get a small reward, small reward. And even the adult video games, like at the service clubs where the machine goes ding, ding, brrr, ping, and, and you get a squirt of, of dopamine to keep you going. A healthy way to get your squirt of dopamine is to have a to-do list of all the things that you, you're going to do. And actually, as you cross one off, as you actually complete a task, dopamine is, is produced from that. So it's one that we make ourselves. We don't need anyone else around us to, um, to help produce it. Food can actually produce dopamine too. So if you have a nice meal and, and you're getting the pleasure reward of, of somebody who's telling you that you're really clever and you look great, that can give you a squirt of of dopamine as well. And then if you put some food on top of it, boy. And healthy eating can increase our dopamine levels. It's good for our gut bacteria. A lot of our neurotransmitters are actually produced in our gut. So healthy eating is important. Serotonin is responsible for regulating our mood. It helps us with feelings of significance and pride. Because we are social animals, social recognition is really important. So serotonin actually flows when a young person graduates from high school. They have their formal mum and dad go and they look at their, their child and they have feelings of pride and the child feels great because they've gotten to the end of school and they've achieved. So I guess it's so social recognition and pride. That's serotonin flowing and it happens for the person that's looking on as well as for the person that's on the receiving end of the award, say. Serotonin is actually produced in our gut. So 80 to 90% of serotonin is produced in our gut. So eating well, a balanced diet is really important. Sleep is really important for serotonin. Actually, if you don't have enough natural serotonin, you start to feel anxious you can get uh, feel really stressed and that'll that'll keep you awake too it's responsible for or lack of serotonin is responsible for a lot of behavior problems and a lot of people try and boost it artificially with uh, sugary things and high carbohydrate foods people look for if they're lacking serotonin it's to give you that boost and you can feel really hungry if you um and just keep binge eating to uh, to get enough serotonin. So 
it's quite addictive really you know like one of the ways that you can boost your serotonin is helping someone or giving something doing something for somebody actually boosts your serotonin random acts of kindness um, even relaxation regular exercise getting out in the sunlight all of those things are really good for our serotonin reflecting on what you've achieved in the past can actually boost our serotonin and gratitude just being grateful for the fact that the sun rises every morning for a loved one oxytocin's our love chemical it's foundational to create intimacy and trust to make us feel safe it's the building blocks for healthy foundations oxytocin is best pictured with a mother nursing her child oxytocin's the antidote to stress when we feel stressed if we are in a loving relationship and the person your partner or child gives you a hug it can counteract all of that stress that's flowing through your body and it helps to re- reduce anxiety like oxytocin produces calmness so is it produced internally or can we sort of have it externally it is a social thing unlike endorphins you can go for a run on your own and you can manufacture endorphins dopamine you can write your own list and you can tick them off oxytocin is a social chemical so it's really only produced in relationships in relationship you can't yeah. produce it on your own yeah actually a good way to to increase your oxytocin and somebody else is actually listening to the other person quite often these days your conversations are all just one way people just download their stuff and you stand there thinking there's a fire hose squirting all over you and there's no real connection you just both walk away and and one feels great and the other one feels probably a bit used to create a, an actual bond with somebody if you actually listen and hear what the person's saying and then affirm what they're saying or or have some sort of corresponding retort an actual conversation you both go away with a, a boost of oxytocin and it actually creates a, a real relationship all people experience stress but every social animal on the planet experiences feelings of stress and anxiety if you imagine you were in africa and you were surveying a a plain and there were a lot of gazelle grazing a massive big herd of gazelle grazing and one su- suddenly jerks its head up thinking that they've seen or heard a lion or heard something that's our body's response to stress and stress hormones are designed to keep us alive it's the first stage of stress the fight or flight syndrome and it helps us to be hyper attuned to danger it's the way our body prepares to either flee from a scene from danger or to fight the enemy our heart rate is in- increases and the interesting thing about stress hormones in the social environment is if you again picture the gazelles on the plain if one is scared all the others go oh, there's something going on here and they all raise their head they might not have seen or heard anything but because of the social environment everybody feels the stress that that one first felt and they all then flee and our bodies are designed to do this though the effect of the stress hormones in the body is to prepare our body to respond to danger and it's it's a good thing it actually gets us out of bed in of a morning we have to go to work to earn money but the problem is if those stress hormones stay in our body too long and become chronic they affect every system in our body negatively because really when the cortisol level goes up its object is actually to raise your heart rate uh to close down a lot of systems in your body that aren't necessary to survival at that time and to pump a whole lot of energy into the muscles to run and all that sort of thing but i i think one of the things in our community if we look at gazelles and one person's got a problem if one gazelle looks startled the rest of get all startled but these days if we've got one startled person we put them on the on the news and everybody can be startled at once and the whole cortisol level of the community raises people's blood pressure go up uh and until they get a resolution of the problem and the problem might be interest rates or it might be the stock market things that see the gazelles actually have 
um, they have a solution. They they can actually run from the situation and it will die down. Uh, but in our stressful community, interest rates don't die down in in a way like it. It doesn't. It stays there continually. And if your body is is continually being flooded with adrenaline, cortisol, or whatever your heart rate's going to remain really high and that's uh, the blood pressure problem that we have in the community and that causes your immune immune system to shut down because uh, all that all your body's trying to do is is survive if your body's continually in, into fight or flight through um, excessive cortisol or stress the first thing that you lose is sleep and sleep is essential to the um, uh, the immune system and to balancing our our body chemistry and our our psychological balance. So, if you've got continual uh, stress, you're going to feel anxious. You won't sleep properly. But talking about that, let's have a look at some ways that we can help manage and reduce stress. One of the ways is to practice meditation or mindfulness or prayer. Just spending 15 minutes a day quietly, practicing relaxation, practicing some deep breathing. When we're stressed, our breathing tends to be very high in our body, so it's very shallow. And we can practice getting our breath down deep into our body. And you can do that on and off throughout the day whenever you start to feel those stress muscles contracting. Getting outside into nature, going for a walk or a run if you're that way inclined, along the beach, in a forest, in a park. Even just gardening can help to reduce stress. Exercise regularly, 30 to 60 minutes most days of the week, really does help us to manage stress. It helps balance our hormones and it improves our sleep, as you were talking about. And it helps our metabolic function, like helps our blood sugar levels stay even. And we'll get back to food again. Eating a healthy whole food diet makes a huge difference. When we're continually having high sugar, high fat, high processed foods, too much caffeine, too much alcohol, all of those things add stress to our bodily organs and help to increase our our mental stress rates as well. A- another way that's really helpful too is to, to be of service or to give to another person. That can actually, even when we're feeling stressed, that can help calm ourselves as well as calm another person down. 